What's going on guys, gals and all you other StarCraft fans out there, welcome back to game number 3 of the best of 5 between SOS DDX Henderson in the top left, playing as the mighty Blue Terran and in the bottom right hand side we have our very own Toasty, or Jake and James, if that's what you want to call them. Anyway guys, welcome, this is what could possibly be the last game between these two, because uh, it is a best of 5, Jake is currently leading 2 to nothing. And James hasn't won anything yet. They're both playing as their respected races, so this could be a better game than what we've seen so far. And it is a lot longer. It is a going on a 40 minute game as well, so obviously something happens and they both put a bit of a fight, but we will see. Anyway, but very, very simple. Very, very simple so far. Nothing much. Jake gonna be blocking off already. Let's have a look up on the production tab to see what is going on. James will be going with hatch before pull as per usual to block any uh, reaper harassment that Jake might have in store. Which is not very I wanna it's not common anymore. Jake doesn't do it a lot anymore, but uh, he probably might do it, he might pull it out of his sleeve, we never know. Because he is going for his gas right now, which could be he'd be going for some early reapers or anything like that. But gas could mean absolutely anything in this matchup. But James going for his spawning pool to get some more defense up just in case the Reaper. Because the Reapers are, are you know, are a pain in the ass when you think about it. They are a very big uh, threat. James at this point though could really go for a second heart tree if he wanted to. He might be saving up for it now because once that spawning pool finishes he will be saving up to go for his heart tree. So he will be in the lead economy wise. They're completely blocked off now so any zerglings that want to get through won't be able to but this overlord will be able to scout everything once it gets over there. He's on the move command there. It might stay there because James might have a Nidus worm. Uh, planned or anything like that, so this we'll find out really. But the barracks is nearly, nearly finished now. Jake will probably be sending that straight back to work to probably build a factory or straight back to work, possibly. He might end up going for the expansion, he does need to lower the sorry about the frame rate issues, guys. Jake, little than that, he's trying to go back. There we go, he's moved it back out now. Have they both gone back to work? They both have gone back to work. Jake going to be scouting James's base now to see if there is anything in store for him waiting. Little does he know that his spawning pool is on the way with two zerglings. Oh, the spawning pool has finished now. Two zerglings on the way. The drone and the SUV just high five there to say hi to each other. And GG, GLHF. That's surprising, not GLHF either. Jake will soon find out that James has got no hat tree yet, which uh, might lead him to believe that James is probably going for a one base play or he's going for something a bit more safe than usual. I'm going to get that find out that it's not there so I'm probably going to wait at the bottom of the ramp. The drone is there to see. I'll just stop as uh, I want to know how players do that. I really don't know. To actually deny the second base so for uh, James uh, he's doing a very good job of that. Jake is actually being attacked right now by those four Zerglings that are out on display. Yep, four Zerglings, two Marines. The two Marines could win this because uh, Zergling speed isn't there yet, but it is on the way, so Jake does have to be careful for going in for attack, which he probably won't do here. We'll take out this drone so he can turn build his expansion, which the SCB will be doing right now. Uh, I'm going to imagine that uh, an SCB is probably going to come down here and build a bunker for some defense, maybe. SCB is on the way back now. This SCB will probably be set to actually build the bunker, possibly. I hope so. There is the bunker going down. Very, very typical of Terran now. A lot of Terran players are actually doing this at the moment uh, against Zerg because obviously to stop any Zerg rushes and things like that. But James isn't going for that so far. Does Jake actually know that he's built his hatchery? No, Jake actually doesn't know that James has actually built his second hatchery yet. And does James know that he has... No, Jake actually doesn't know that the hatchery has gone down. Supplies are even... Nothing much going on really. Early game, there's nothing really much either play you can do. Obviously to maybe do some harass, maybe with the marines, but it's really pointless. James had what I had in mind. He's going to maybe zone up to see what James has got, but he's not a uh, Jake Scott. He's actually not going to get the fastest bunker. He might be able to run on by if he's lucky because he's just James will be waiting for our metabolic boost to finish as early as speed. Overlord over here. Not got any information just yet. He doesn't actually know what's going on, but he can guess what is going on, I suppose. But here go the Zerglings into the bunker. Oh, I just realised that he actually can't be able to do that yet. Because the bunker will absolutely destroy all of those Zerglings. All of the Zerglings. Destroy all of the Zerglings. Six more Zerglings on the way of the Spinecrawler and a Bailing Nest. James will be going for Bailing Bus to actually break through 
the bunker's defence before he actually knew it because James is a very, very heavy bailing player. Jake got his first sheet sank out at the moment. Jake will probably send this STV to block off one there and one there. You can actually still have a little bit of a gap there, but obviously siege tanks can't get through the marine going out now to try and see what he's there waiting for him. The Zerglings are probably going to be pulled into the bunker if he's lucky. Oh, James just macroed out of there really, really quickly. Macroed out of there. Two bailings going down there. This probably isn't going to do much if James, is, uh, if Jake's careful, but that siege tank will probably end up destroying all these Zerglings and the bailings before they actually get any closer. And even more Zerglings on the way for defence. He might turn some more into that. I would recommend that he does, really. Because to get past that one siege tank and the second one is also nearly finished. Jake going for a 1 1 1 without actually building the starport. Yeah, they're running there at the front just to provide vision. So the siege tank has to start chipping away at those Zerglings and Bailings before any serious damage is actually done. And both players saturated the bases quite evenly, I suppose. Two more Zerglings on the way. A queen on the way as well, probably for this base over here. There is the queen. Get some more larvae. Oh, look. All the Zerglings got destroyed. What a surprise. All that's left now is Bailings. Jake will be waiting to actually see the Bailing boss. So he'll probably pull one. He'll want to pull one of these Marines forward. He probably will lose it. But James actually got the back up now with the few Zerglings. But they'll probably easily get taken out. Excuse me. Jake's starport is on the way. He might end up not putting a reactor on. I'm not 100% sure, but his second factory is on the way as well. He will probably be going for Marine Siege Tank, as per usual, with Medivacs for back up. It's a very typical Jake build. He does it all the time. Because it is very, very effective, I have to admit. Two uh, extractors on the way. Yeah, extractor on the way. For James to get some more gas to build, actually build up these buildings. James will probably be going for his third very, very shortly. And the Overlord are moving out to get map control. And James had to, has actually got map control with his Zerglings, obviously with Zergling, the Zergling speed as well. Uh, he's going to be able to get around the map really, really easily. Until a um, Medivac actually comes out, there's not going to be much James can do, uh, Jake can do. He's going to be able to fill in more. Four missile turrets, one, probably two on either base, on the mineral lines, exactly like that. And a few extra more scattered around for any other surprises that James might have in. In store for him. There, uh, these are actually. Neither player really knows anything about each other's bases, but James obviously knows what Jake is going to go for. Jake actually getting his 1 1 at the moment. Upgrade by it's there. Is the scan to actually see if he's got his second, and he does. Jake um, doesn't really, can't really do anything much about information. He actually really wants to do this, but James is waiting over here. That's probably going to do a lot of damage. That SV is probably going to get taken out. But the bit they wave waste one of the bailings there and the two more. <gasps> he just lost a few of his bailings there. That is absolutely terrible. He's going to be burrowing these now to actually do less damage. Jake will actually need to scan to be able to see these because the main reason being he actually can't see them with a sensor tower because it's not a detector. But he can see that there are three zerglings there or three bailings turning or zerglings turning into bailings to be able to deal with that. You'll probably spread these out for maybe one there, one there, one there, and maybe a few at the back just in case. But the both players aren't spending minerals. Stimpak is now on the way for Jake with a spire for James to be able to get out those mutants to cause some air harass, which is very, very useful. There is Jake's. Oh, sorry, James' is third going down. A bit of a pain, really. As you can see, guys, I'm more, I'm more spruced up today because <laughs> the other two classes weren't the best, if I'm 100% honest. But I'm all, I'm all ready now. Those sea tanks are definitely going to do that. He's trying to take out that sense of terror as best as he can. It will blow up exactly like that, but now Jake doesn't know what is coming. So he's going to pull a marine forward to be able to deal with it, but he doesn't know that these bailings are actually scanned. So if James does actually walk over these, it's going to be a big, the medivac now moving out for a drop with two hellions and four marines, which uh, I used a lot, but I usually get out a lot quicker than he does. Uh, I do a very simple build. It's not a simple build, but I do a build that's actually even like, like that. He should really be moving this round right now. Because all these overlords, there's actually no early fence apart from two spore crawlers. And once he drops his hellions and his marines down, they'll be able to take out that spore crawler really easily. James really wants to actually put some there, but the muters are now out, which will cause, cause some serious damage if Jake isn't careful. And obviously, four siege tanks, uh, sorry, uh, four missile turrets on each, uh, or five on that one, sorry, and four on the other one. Yep, more siege tanks on the way. He really needs to siege those up. Those mutas probably aren't going to do much damage as he'd like. 
but he might move his army out of position maybe just a little bit but the siege tanks will not move because as we all know siege, can, siege tanks cannot attack uh it'd be cool if they could but they're probably a bit more overpowered so i'm all of uh barracks on the way for jake now five all together with only one star four and two factories it's very very messy uh siege tank and marine heavy because it does work it does work but the total strike is insane those meters are going to get taken out really, really easily in North on like that, and Jake has lost a lot more than what he should have done. He just lost Harry's L. 35 units lost for James now, unfortunately. That is a lot more cost efficient than what he'd, uh, what Jake would like, because obviously with these missile turrets here, 400, it's 100 per missile turret, and he destroyed a lot of units then. So those, those missile turrets basically paid for themselves. Here comes the overlord to do some more scouting because his other one actually got taken out by the looks of it. Oh no, sorry, he's denying his third with that one. Uh, Jim, Jake might go for his third. That sand tower is back up. Oh, that bailing might end up being uh, marine might end up being taken out. Oh, it just gets past. Just gets past. The medivac actually waiting there now. He's pro oh my god, I didn't see that actually. Obviously got taken out. Spore crawlers have been buffed. They do a lot of damage now against all the units and things like that but still the su supply is very very different James all J Jake almost 30 ahead in supply those all the lost movement absolutely rapid as hell spreading all the creep uh, James I wouldn't really do that if I were that is exactly why I James is just basically like, that was a waste of an overlord and James knew that because he wanted to see what he's got and yes his uh, what he's thinking right now is marine siege tank, which Jake always goes for, and nothing really simple. So James is going to be trying to keep him contained. Really, he can't really go for his third unless he destroys this and actually destroys the overlord because the overlord's producing a lot of creep. But uh, yeah, there's nothing really much going on at the moment. Neither player's doing any harass. That is a quite a big army for James, but most of it is going to be turned into bailings. So actually be able to get through this bot medivac drop feeling filled up with eight marines again to do some more damage probably to back this up because that one can't really do anything anymore because as soon as it tries to drop that will take it out without any problems as well as the queen or the two queens that he's got now the creep spread isn't the best at the moment james could really use the creep spread to his advantage but a multi-pronged drop going on from here jake now two medivacs two two sets of marines jake probably going to his third here and using the other medivac to be able to drop here try and take out the sprawl crawlers if he can but we'll find out Tim also going to on the way with more spine crawlers or spore crawlers sorry from james james if he's paying attention will be able to see this drop but will it do a lot of damage just one spore crawler there won't be able to do anything though it's just out of range but the queen is there the queen will easily get killed by these marines and with the medivac killing at the same time that's really really simple these are probably going to get killed here come the to try and deal with it no not enough there here come the third one jake will probably pick those up and get on out of there take a few hits from the spine crawlers squad crawlers on the way this is still confusing as hell very very fast paced game this is still 20 no maybe 20 minutes yeah i say 20 minutes under 20 minutes left at this moment in time but James still denying that third. J Jake is currently uh, behind in the economy. But James can easily get his fourth up by now. Because Jake isn't doing a lot of uh, harassment as he'd like to. Those Marines doing a lot of damage. Has been taking a lot of damage by that. That not being actually touched at all. Neither of the sport crawlers being touched. The sport crawlers have been buffed a lot. Uh, Jake should really get an SCV to repair that. Yes, SCVs can repair her, uh, which is really, 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 I don't know, really, really weird. But uh, either player is not actually spending the minerals as best as they could. Jake probably going to go for the third, but realise, oh no, I can't do it. He'll end up probably end up destroying this if he can, then maybe moving down and destroying that. Or he might just send some marines all the way around. Another drop coming in for Jake at the moment in time with uh, another spore crawler oh it's better to move the spore crawler but what james can do now is actually sorry jake can move now he's supposed to put it there and attack from that side or he could put it there and could do a lot more damage than it should do let's have a look at the units lost tab even more units being lost for james at the moment james is well well behind james needs to do some harass here moves out the big army for james with some bailings at the back he's actually going to try and 
move in for the side. That being blocked off, but not going to be done in time. Well, she's doing a lot of damage over the third. Actually realising that he's actually not built the third yet. The bailing's there. Burrow them just to be safe. Zergling is now trapped in this corner if he's not careful. The bailing's trying to move their ass on out of there. Because he'll probably move around the front just as there. If he's not careful, those marine, that marine will actually take it out if he's not careful. He probably will burrow those as well. I'll spread them out and burrow them a bit more. Burrow Bailings is a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, Jake probably does need to get Raven out at some point to be able to deal with these. So there's a lot being destroyed. Jake, James will actually then be able to get around here. But Jake will probably destroy that before we have to get time to. The Raven's still not being produced yet. Jake could really move all these Marines down. Let's have a look at the units. One Hellion still over here with the Medivac. Oh, the Medivac's actually moved. So the Hellion there doing nothing. That could be used later on for some something, maybe. Oh, big stim there by Jake. The Bailey's going to get taken out if he's not careful. Oh, there's one there in there is two. That, uh, that wasn't really as fast efficient as it should have been, really. The took out two Bailey, uh, two Marines with that. Those Marines are constantly pumping those. Jake should really try and work on getting this one down there because those Zerglings are going to do a lot of damage if he's not careful. Jim, Jake will probably scan there, be able to take them out if he pulls his forward. Jake is currently supply capped. So look at the production jam. Jake actually doesn't realise this yet. He will probably call down some extra supply to be able to do it. Be able to unsupply block himself. But one muter and 12 zerglings being produced at the moment by James. Another, another drop being done by Jake. Jake doing really, really good with the harassment here. Trying to pull his army out of position with uh, medivacs. And the Marines, is it just full of Marines again? It is full of Marines again. If James is paying attention, he will see that. Ventricle sacks. James could do his own drops if he really wanted to. The Spore Crawler, Jake actually going for the main base, but the main base is a little bit more defended. He does have to be careful a tiny bit. He'll probably try and focus down the Spore Crawler straight away and maybe just try the Bailing Nest if he's good. No, no, just, no, that was a break of the skin mirror. Harassment there. The spine crawler doing a lot of damage to the Marines with the Queen as well. Here come the Zergling. Jake should have really took out that spore crawler. The big stream there trying to get it back in. The Medivac will be able to do it. And off they go. Oh, the poor Medivac. I mean, the poor Marine. He might go for an attack on the second now. Maybe. Jake. Jake could do it because that would mean actually James has to pull his Marine units all the way around to be able to deal with it. All these Zerglings here, two overlords waiting and chilling to see what it goes down. James actually not spending his minerals as best as he could. By this point he's going for ultras, but he's just going for a very basic bailing, uh, bailing Zergling muter. Other units could be useful right now, obviously to get that supply up, because uh, the supply difference is absolutely huge right now. It is 51 supply, Jake is supply blocked again. Those Zerglings actually get easily taken out. Right up cleanly, the supply is just getting in quite a lot. That was a waste of Zerglings uh, if you ask me. He has got a lot more back at home. He could be building a lot more, trying to do some harass, trying to do some drops. Like he has done there. Well that can get easily cleaned up, the overall easily get on out there. And will that one get taken out? The stim by Jake. And he takes it out as well. Not really doing much for James though because obviously his supply isn't that high at the moment. He could get it higher if he wanted to. The Hellion back at home now. Basically doing nothing. Uh, so look at the units. Still one Hellion. How that Hellion got all the way across the map? I don't know. They've been spotted. Eight Bailings, four Muters, seventy-three Zerglings. There's a lot of Zerglings, but they will easily get taken out. Let's have a look at the upgrades tab. We have Carry Space, Ventricle Sacks, Burrow, Metabolic Boost. Actually, no ground units uh, upgrades. We've got what level one armor, uh, level one earth, sorry. James really needs to spend those minerals. He's got a lot of minerals, and the income is absolutely huge right now. James uh, is well ahead in the economy. Jake only just put in his third down, a bit behind at the 25 minute mark. But Jake is not spending his minerals either. He's spending them a lot better than what actually James is. But it's still a massive, massive difference right now. Jake actually building a command center, two siege tanks, four marines, actually getting some upgrades for his uh, his vehicles. So that'll be the siege tanks and the one hellion that he's got. <laughs> that is a big scan. Actually going to try and take that out, put it straight into the siege tank line and get cleaned up really, really easily. 
Jake should really send an SUV to repair that centre tower if he wants to keep it up as best as he possibly can. CM new big scans are by Jake Tubes anymore. They need to go all around. That sense tower gets taken out. <laughs> That's really, really big scans there by Jake. Jake Tubes got a four foot, which he hasn't. The creep spread really could have been used for Jake's, uh, James's favour, really, to get those units across the map quicker. Here come the two sea tanks. These are probably going to get put down maybe somewhere around here, like that, to be able to provide defence for any Zerglings coming from there and there, like that one. Just avoided death, barely. That is a lot, a lot of siege tanks. Let's have a look how many siege tanks there. That's 21 siege tanks. That is a lot. With 1 1, stim pack, combat shield, and concussive shells. Has Jake actually got any marauders? I don't think he has. No, he hasn't. So I don't know why he's got um, a big burrow there by James. He's probably waiting to go. He really could unburrow as well as right now with that. There's a big shift through the building. Oh, this is a lot of damage there. But oh my god, the sea tank's going to easily clean that up. That is absolutely gutting for James. Sorry if I just deafened everyone. But James has did a lot of damage there. He just needs to worry about those uh, sea tanks out, which the mutants are there for. In come the mutants. Try to take out the marines. Take out the marines first. Then go for the sea tank. The sea tank got his own good. Lose that really, really easily. The oh my god, this game is so good. I actually don't know who's going to win this right now. This is really, really close because James did a lot of damage with those buildings then. Destroyed completely, wiping, wiping out those huge tanks now, destroying the Marines as they go along. But they're trying to pull him into the missile turret. It's James, don't fall for it, don't fall for it, James. Thank you, God. Whew. You know what Jake, uh, Jake really does need to do is build up those Marines, which he's got 16 on the way. He to, what he really could do is put reactors on these to get more out than that. Probably building more siege tanks now to be able to deal with that. More missile turrets because he's seen the uh, the music is quite high. It's not as high as it could be if James was actually spending his minerals, but he's not. This base is going to be saturated right now. He probably put two gas down, even though Jake doesn't really need it. The supply difference is kind of evening up now. They're only 11 behind or 11 difference. But that is a lot of sea tanks to deal with there. If James can get another engagement like that, he will be able to clean this up no problem. But it's just this one missile turret here doing all the damage. And the other one that's in play, so we're going to try and get those out of there. going to go for the third. Stim his Marines down. James should really move on out of there. Don't engage the Marines because you know you cannot win that battle, especially with uh, level 3 being on the way and actually level 2 armor, as far as I can assume. No, it's level 1 armor, sorry, and level 2 weapon. Those missiles are doing a hell of a lot of damage. You could really concentrate on getting these barracks down now to stop the Marines from actually getting out. Pointless taking out the actual uh, tech lab because Jake only really needs it to stim. Huge money back there, but I don't know if there's anything in it. I wasn't really paying attention. There's nothing in that one, that's two down. James is doing a lot of damage right now, but he could be doing a lot more. He needs to be constantly pulling, uh, building units back up. Let's have a look at the APM. APM, Jake as high as per usual. But James microing very, very well to try and get units out there. He lost a lot more than he needed to then, really. The supply difference has been gained by Jake again. Taking out a lot of those siege tanks, he could really, really, really deal with that uh, that missile turret right there if he's careful. What he could do, or what I recommend he should do at this moment in time, it would probably be uh, burrowed uh, roaches to be able to move on the ground. I think we can move on the ground or something like that. Try to do some damage at this nerve, but those missile turrets should have cleaned that up really, really good. Jake can get out of there. Oh, that's a lot of damage there to move. Oh, I don't know if you should have really done that. Even though Jake has lost a lot of units, thanks to those mailing buffs, so James trying to actually do some deal and damage now and have to deal with these siege tanks, just stim marines, and to be able to clean that up really easy if he's not careful. Jake moving on out now, this could be the end of the game, I really don't know, this is a really close game. If James uh, does lose this though, that is it unfortunately for the best of five. The supply going down and down and down for James, James needs to be constantly building units, which he is not. He needs to be able to pump out units as quick as Jake at this point, otherwise those siege tanks are going to absolutely rip through anything that comes into its path apart from the air units. But the Bailings could really, really do a lot of damage now if James is doing it. The Zerglings are on the way to be able to produce those Bailings. James has a lot of gas to be able to do that. I think Bailings actually cost... Is it... Uh, actually, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, let's have a look, shall we, for bailings. It's 25. He could produce a lot of bailings out of this and burrow them on the creep to be able to stop them getting to the base. The mutants actually doing a lot of damage to the siege tanks, chipping away at those siege tanks as best as he can. And it's doing it. It is helping him because at the moment, 
he actually is doing the damage that he needs to. The Raven actually coming on out now to actually stop those Benelis from doing any more damage because Jake could have actually lost that if he wasn't really careful uh, in that engagement a few minutes ago. If he wasn't careful, he actually would have lost that battle, but because he was constantly pumping out Marines and things like that, they would easily be able to deal with the Muters and actually pulling them back to the base to be able to deal with them from the missile turrets as well. The Overlord uh, actually looking there to see where that's coming down that way. That is a nice little choke point for the Terran. But obviously with a nice little wide open area here, it could do a lot more damage really. What Jake really, uh, what Jake really does need to scout forward to see if anything waiting for him. Doing the scans to see where they are. Here come the muters. I'd really take it that Marine Power, like, just like that. Jake really, really, really needs to be careful now. Because if James does get another big hit off with the mainlings, he's going to be out of it really, really quick. The either bird mainlings. Jake will probably pull the Raven forward to actually try and deal with these or to try and find them. One big seeker missile hit could probably take all of these out if he's not careful. The Marauders, fire the Marines again, wiping out those muters. Not actually doing anything to the siege tanks if he's not careful. Jake being a pain in the ass. He does fuck out that Raven. Jake really, really, really needs to be careful now because he actually no detection to be able to do that. He should be building another one very, very shortly. There is the medivac going up, but Jake uh, could really, really lose this game now if he's not careful. Those those Bailings need to come up and move a bit more forward because Jake actually hasn't got the vision to be able to deal with those if he puts them there, a few there, and maybe one where the Overlord is. He could wipe this army out if he's not careful. Jake really, really, really needs to be careful now. The supply difference is, is 30, exactly, but... Oh, this game is getting really, really intense now. James not spending his minerals again. Ultraist Cavern, Bailing Ness, um, more hatcheries, anything to be able to deal with this army. This army is absolutely ridiculous. Jake is actually waiting to build up the army. James actually can't allow him to be able to do this. If James actually attacks the base, now he should be okay. Jake has to point out two more starports to be able to actually deal with the Ravens. <coughs> That's me, sorry about that. It will be put uh, two down to pump back the Ravens because. This bailings, bailing bust or bailings could actually do a lot, a lot of damage. The mutants actually trying to do some damage to the sea tanks. Destroying these marines. As you can, Jake putting up missile turrets on the way. Could take that out on it really easily. That's one down. Go back forward. Kill the marine. There we go. It's constantly doing it. Constantly backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. The APM is quite even now. Because Jake is microing real, uh, sorry, James is microing really, really well. Between these two, that was a forward, that was a forward, that missile could have done a lot, a lot of damage off. We need to move his ass on out of there. That was an absolutely horrible for James. But James has actually got the economy to be able to sustain this. He actually needs to build more and more units all the time. He's not building units. He's, let's actually have a look at the units at the moment. 48 drones. James could build an absolute shitload of units with these. What he needs to do is he needs to be really, really careful now. Dirt are the banelings. Oh! Oh! No! Oh, the big thing there. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh! I don't know. That really, really could have done more damage if Jake wasn't careful. Jake was really, really careful with that though. I think this actually might be a GG from James, unfortunately. There are James and it's going into the slaughter. I think this is going to be the GG any second now. Jake might not actually have time to attack the base because it is the GG. Here come the units and there is the GG. Well, actually, no GG, but James was defeated. That is it. Jake has won the little tournament best of five that we have been doing. Two, three to nothing. James put up a really, really good fight in that game, I have to admit, but he wasn't spending his minerals as fast as he could have been. He could have been pump constantly pumping out units, muters, zerglings, bailings, anything. He could have spread his creep a bit more to see when the army was coming. Uh, the overlords, the overlord, placement, overlord placements could have been better, I'm 100% honest, but I don't play zerg, so I probably could be talking out my ass at the moment. But that was a very, very intense game. Well done to Jake for actually winning the tournament or the little best of five. And uh, unlucky James, but maybe next time there's always a next time. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the cast so far. I'm planning on doing a lot more of these now because I actually love doing these StarCraft games. It's absolutely amazing, especially with things like that, with the bailings and things like that. It's really, really good. I want to be able to do it a lot faster as well. Uh, still get the names mixed up because they both have a J in them. Pain in the ass, it really is, guys. But anyway, guys, if you actually have any. Um, Starcraft replays that you actually wanted to show or send off for me to cast or any of us to cast we will actually set up an email the email will be a link down in the description 
uh, to be able to send it to us. Basically, all you have to do is save it as a replay into your folder, then send it us in an email. The email link will be down below in the comments. Oh, sorry, in the info. And to be fair, I'd imagine we won't get a lot, but if we do, we'll cast them anyway because a lot of spare time at the moment, guys. So yeah. Thank you, thank you very much for watching dudes and dudettes. If you did enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up and basically do anything else you like, guys. You know what to do. You've been with us long enough now to know what to do. <laughs> thank you very much for watching and peace out.